Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back into WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan softball. We're here in Louisville, Kentucky for game two of, or game three, day two of the Cardinal Classic. It's the Michigan Wolverines and the Dartmouth College Big Green in this one. Lineups being announced now. It's another lovely day here in Louisville, Kentucky. They just announced Lexi Della Monica. It's her birthday. She was wearing a bit of a pink sash around her shoulder in warm-ups and still has it on, actually. And um, to run you around this Michigan order, very familiar faces for Michigan. Ellie Seeler leads off in left field. Indy Langford hits second, plays second base. Maddie Erickson hits third, playing third base. Kiki Thole hits cleanup catching. Lily Valamont hits fifth at first base. Janisa Conway hits sixth in center field. Ella Stevenson hits seventh in right field. Aaron Hain bats eighth as the designated player. And Ella McVeigh rounds it out at shortstop. Lauren Durkowski in the circle for game one today. I mean, TJ, we were talking about this yesterday. We thought Durkowski might have been saved for game two against the Louisville Cardinals squad that we thought might be a little bit more of a challenge than South Dakota. The Cardinals crushed Michigan, a mercy rule after five. And this afternoon, they've got a Big Ten squad in Illinois in the afternoon, but Bonnie Thole rolls out the ace, Lauren Drakowski in the morning game against the Ivy League opponent, opponent Dartmouth. I'm Alex Miller, alongside me, TJ Fossmeyer for this one. A pleasure to continue to call this team down here in Louisville. We've got two games today, this one and directly following it, the matchup with Illinois. And for Dartmouth, their lineup, the catcher leads off. Don't see that a ton. No, you don't. Mary Beth Cahalan, and then designated player Ali Odie hits second, and the left fielder Alana Panu hits third. The center fielder Olivia Scram hits fourth. Kelly Beaupre playing first base hits fifth. Layla Hennessy at third hits sixth. Quen Wilson in right field hits seventh. Justice Malone at short hits eighth. And Ashley France hits ninth playing second base. Rachel McCarroll will get the start in the circle when the time comes to it. So for Michigan, yesterday a very up and down day. Your bats yep. are quiet early on against South Dakota. Then you're down 3-0 in the bottom of the seventh, score four and walk it off in a win. Yeah. And then the next game comes against Louisville and you give up 10 runs in the third inning, cross three pitchers and get yeah. mercy ruled through five. So a bit of an adventure on day one for Michigan and we'll see how the maize and blue look today. Yeah, but through it all, they showed grit. Like in that uh, winning game-winning inning in the bottom of the seventh against South Dakota, and then you know their offense did show promise. Janisa Conway had herself a night with two home runs last night versus Louisville. Won an absolute moonshot. So Kahalen, first pitch from Durkowski, is in there for a strike. 10 a.m. Even your first pitch today. And Durkowski, the Wolverine ace, the junior. Here's her 0-1 delivery. Off speed in there for strike number two, 0-2. Durkowski, the junior, Elmhurst, Illinois native. Year three in the maize and blue, two extra excellent seasons behind her and in the midst of another one this year. Here's her 0-2 to Kahalen. Rocks, here it is, misses outside. She's joined in the battery as she was yesterday by Kiki Thole. We saw in game two yesterday, Lily Valamont, who's at first base, got the start at catcher, and Thole was at first base. But with Durkowski in the circle, it's the senior catcher, Thole, in there. Here's the one-two. Hard hit. Erickson dies, but it's under her glove. A single in the left field for Mary Beth Cahalan. And that's what we've seen more of against opponents, against Durkowski. It seems like just more solid contact from opposing batters, particularly out to left field. So that whatever Durkowski's throwing, you know, opposing batters are pulling it pretty easily. So Kahalen stands on first. Ali Odie is in there. First pitch to her, misses upstairs. Kahalen on first, two stolen bases to her name this season. Dartmouth has only played nine games this season. 
Michigan has played 25. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Bunt popped up in the air. Foul on the first base side. Toward the on-deck circle over there. The hitter in the on-deck circle, Alana Panu, comes and retrieves the hitter, Ali Odie's back for her. And now it's a 1-1 count. Infield and outfield pretty straight on. against the Dartmouth sophomore designated player. Here's the 1-1 pitch, swung on and missed. Upstairs from Drakowski, Odie couldn't catch up to it. Yeah, with that fastball topping out at 70, you know, it, that's hard for batters to catch up to that and get some solid contact on it. And that's what's, that's so deadly about Drakowski, that fast fastball and then the off speed. 1-2 fouled off the third base side. Nice play by a coach in the Michigan dugout to field it. So we'll do it over one and two. Runner on first. Kahalen had a single into left field to lead it off for Dartmouth. Here's the one two from Drakowski. Drops it in there, called strike three. So Odie goes down looking and one out now here in the top of the first inning. It's that off speed that I've coined over reliable for Drakowski. That, you know, that makes her so effective that just kept her frozen. She just stood there looking at it. Alana Panu digs in. First pitch to her. She lays down a bunch. Kowski will play it. Langford covers, and she's there in time. Two outs now. The runner, Kahalen, though, has successfully moved up to second, but with two outs. It's now up to the cleanup hitter, Olivia Scram. And the freshman's having an excellent campaign for the big green, hitting 320 early on in this season. But so as I was saying, Dartmouth is three and six on the season. Michigan 14 and 11. So Dartmouth not a lot of experience under this team's belt. Tarkowski's first pitch low and away to scram. The freshman from Windsor, Colorado digs into the left-handed batter's box, awaiting a 1-0 pitch. Tarkowski rocks, here it is. Misses upstairs. 2 and 0. Murkowski, right foot on the rubber. Here's her 2 0 pitch. Misses inside. And they'll say it's oh. it Nick Scram. Didn't catch much of her, didn't change no. path, much of a path, and Thole caught it. But they'll say it got her, so. A hit by pitch for Scram, and now there's two aboard with two outs for Kelly Beaupre. I didn't think that hit her. I don't know. That close call. Beaupre now digging into the left handed box. The senior. Here's the first pitch to her. In the in on the plate, inside part of the plate for a strike. Beaupre, a senior, last year, excellent year, hit 325, seven homers. This year hitting 346, but yet to collect an extra base hit. Here's the 0-1. That one misses low. And Beaupre would love to pick up her first extra base hit of the season right now with two aboard for the big green. Here's the 1-1 from Drakowski, misses away. And Bupre was the best um, hitter on the team last season with an Ivy League best 639 slugging percentage, team best in average and home runs. And she was a potent hitter last season in the Ivy League. 2-1 to her. That one's upstairs, 3-1. If Bupre reaches base, it'd be Layla Hennessy, the junior hitting 280 to follow. So 3-1 count, two outs here in the top of the first, two aboard. Here's the 3-1 pitch from Drakowski. Fouled off off the netting behind home plate. Put down a one hop or ended up being a couple hops off a bowel by the hitter in the on deck circle, Hennessy. So now the count is full, two outs, two aboard. Drakowski can end it right here. Sets. Here's the full count pitch. Swung on and missed. Drakowski goes up and in and Gets the swinging strikeout. So the big green strand two in the top of the first, the shutout first frame for Lauren Drakowski. And that's what we've seen from Drakowski in this tournament, her ability to get out of jams and keep the runners 
keep um, restrain the runners. So now it'll be the Michigan order coming up. I ran through it at the top of the broadcast, but here it is again, very familiar. Sealer leads it off, followed by Langford, then Erickson hits third. Then Kiki Thole, the senior catcher, cleans up. Lily Valamont follows, then Janisa Conway sixth, Ella Stevenson seventh, Aaron Hayne, the designated player in this one, eighth, and Ella McVeigh rounds it out in her spot as the nine hole hitter in this one. And they'll face the junior, Rachel McCarroll, who for Dartmouth last year had a really excellent season, a 3.85 ERA over over 170 innings pitched, 34 appearances, 27 of them starts. Has been banged up a little bit this season, a 5.38 ERA to her name. Opponents are hitting 3.55 off of her in her 26 innings pitched, but again, very early on in this Dartmouth season, they've only played nine games. So a lot of season for McCarroll to bring her numbers back to where she wants them. Yeah, but she's proven to be an excellent pitcher in the Ivy League. She was all Ivy second league team, uh, top five in ERA, 10 wins, three shutouts last season. So she's proven to be an excellent pitcher. And around the horn for Dartmouth, behind the dish is Mary Beth Cahalan, joins McCarroll in the battery. Left to right in your outfield, Alana Panu in left, Olivia Scram in center, Quen Wilson in right, left to right in your infield, Layla Hennessy at third, Justice Malone at short, Ashley France at second, and Kelly Beaupre at the cold corner at first. Ellie Sealer will lead it off. She digs into the left-handed box. Here's the first pitch to her from McCarroll upstairs. Prior to this game, TJ and I were watching the Michigan softball team throwing around a football out there in left field. And if I had to pick a quarterback for this squad, it'd probably be Matty Erickson. Yeah. But next up would be Ellie Sealer. Here's the 1-0 pitch. High fly to left field, going back and tracking his Panu. She's got it. So Sealer flies out to open it up for Michigan. And that'll bring up Indiana Langford. McCarroll checks the wristband. Rocks, here's her first pitch to Langford. Dartmouth infield knows the scouting report. The third baseman, Hennessy, coming way in. The shortstop, Malone, close behind her. And on the first base side, pretty tight in as well. Center fielder, Scram, has shifted the left center for the slap hitting lefty, Indy Langford. Here's the 1-0. Swung on and missed, 1-1. One one. They're still leaving a large gap between second and short, and Indy Langford... A couple times this tournament has taken advantage of that to produce a hit on the outfield. Here's the 1-1. One, one, squared around a bunt, pulled it back. Pitch missed low and away. 2-1. and one. Our umpires in this one, Michael Carby calling the balls and strikes. Jeremy Carter at first. Tyler Jesse at third. Here's the 2-1 to Langford upstairs. 3-1. A light breeze, the flags just barely staying straight. Now they calm down, heading to right field. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Lankford. Squared around a bunt, pulled it back, and she works a walk. Indiana Lankford aboard, and with her, a lot of speed stands on first base as Maddie Erickson comes to the plate. Yeah, Indiana Lankford's so fun to watch on the base pass. She makes routine ground balls look competitive just about every time she steps into the batter's box. So this is a good threat for Michigan with Maddie Erickson, this team's best hitter on right now. Erickson, sophomore from Wilsonville, Oregon, has been red hot to begin this season. Here's the first pitch to her. Lankford goes on the steal. The throw is in time. They got her. Lankford dove in head first, but they got her. Lankford seemed to signal to Bonnie Thole that she thought she was safe, but she is called out at second, so that's the second out of the inning, and now nobody aboard for Maddie Erickson. So two outs, nobody on. Here's the 0-1 to Erickson. Ripped to center, started coming in with scram, then she went back, it's over her head, off the netting of the wall there in center. Erickson slides into second, easily in there for a double. That ball was ripped yeah. down the line by Maddie Erickson. Off that 220 wall in dead center. And 
I think Scram just didn't I realize how much that had on it on yeah. a line drive. Started coming in and then she retreated and never had a chance to get back to it. Yeah, I think she yeah she definitely misread that. I didn't think it was going to carry that much either. That was deceptive. And unfortunate that Langford got yeah. thrown out stealing because if she had been standing on second when that ball was hit, she certainly scores to put Michigan up 1-0. to zero. Right. But instead, there's two outs, and Erickson now is on second for Kiki Thole. And Thole looked to keep this going for Michigan. But, at least, but you're seeing some pop in Michigan bats early on, and that's just one thing that Michigan has failed to do in the early stretch of the season. So Kiki Thole, the senior catcher, one of the big-time reliable bats in this Michigan order. Average last year was 289. She sits at 214 entering this at bat. Here's the first pitch to her. That one in the zone. Thole, a very patient hitter. We've seen her take pitches in the zone if she doesn't want to swing on them, but doesn't strike out a whole lot. McCarroll checks the wristband. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That one in the zone as well inside part of the plate for a strike. Thole falls behind 0-2. So two outs in the bottom of the first. No score. Maddie Erickson stands on second after her double, and now it's Kiki Thole at the dish. McCarroll checks the wristband. Here's the 0-2 pitch to her. Thole pops it up. Going back is the second baseman, France. She's got it in, solid, in shallow right field. So four up, two got on. Langford thrown out stealing. And Erickson stranded at second after her double. And that'll do it for the first inning. On to the top of the second, no score in this one. Yeah, that would have been a prime scoring chance if Indiana Langford was right in that she was safe. I thought, I thought she was out from here. It seemed like she got a late jump in the attempt to steal. But at least you're seeing some pop you know, from Maddie Erickson, who has been the team's best hitter so far this season. So top of the second, Lauren Durkowski will go back to work in the circle for Michigan as we get our early morning joy of watching Maddie Erickson's yep. cannon on these warm-up ground balls in the Lily Valamont's glove at first base. Durkowski will face 6-7-8. That's Layla Hennessy, the junior, and then two freshmen, Quen Wilson and Justice Malone, coming up for Dartmouth. And if you're just joining us to run you around the Michigan defense again, it's some usual suspects. Erickson at the hot corner at third, McVeigh at short. Langford joins her up the middle at second base. Valamon at first. Outfield left to right, no surprises. Sealer in left, Conway in center, Stevenson in right field. Thole behind the dish at catcher. Infield will high fives all around for Lauren Drakowski in the circle. Tap on the back from Ella McVeigh, and everyone will retreat from retreat to their positions. So Hennessy will dig on in here. Drakowski sets, working toward the third base side of the rubber, but not all the way over. First pitch to Hennessy is up and away. Layla Hennessy, the junior, hitting 280 so far this season. Last year really struggled, only hit 120, hit 230 the year before, so hot start this season. Next pitch from Durkowski in for a strike inside part of the plate, one and one. NSC Junior, San Francisco, California nader, native all the way across the coast to Dartmouth. Here's the one one tour. Misses inside, two and one. Infield and outfield straight up, standard depth. Dirk rocks, here's the 2-1. Misses up and away, 3-1. and one. So Hennessy will settle back into the right-handed batter's box. 3-1 count. Dirkowski rocks, here it is. And that one caught the inside part of the plate. Hennessy took a move, couple steps toward first, and home plate umpire Michael Carby barked and put the fist in the air to call her back there, and the count is now full at 3-2. and two. 
Durkowski rocks here is that 3-2. Blooper behind the second base bag and it drops in shallow center field. McVeigh was going back from shortstop, couldn't get there. Conway will bring it back in from center field. So a leadoff single for Hennessy. Not hard contact, no. but base hit to base hit. Yeah, no, I agree. She did not get solid contact at all, but it just found the right, right open area for that base hit. So that'll bring up the freshman, Quen Wilson. Double twos on the back of the jersey for Wilson. Here's the first pitch to her from Durkowski. Misses just outside. Thole held the glove there for a moment, hoping Michael Carby would give her the call behind the dish. Never came. Here's the so 1-0 now. Hennessy on first. Corner infield playing a little bit in here for Michigan. Here's the 1-0. Swung on and missed. Big cut from Wilson. Wilson, Paradise Valley, Arizona native. 263 average comes in with her in this one. Two doubles to her name in her early freshman campaign. 1-1 one, one squared up to Bunt. And it looked like the pitch got her on the foot but went past for a strike because her bat never came back. The runner, Hennessy, advances. The pitch went wild off of her foot. But no hit by pitch because the, the bat was still extended across the zone. So a weird situation there, but Hennessy now stands on second base. But Wilson behind one and two as opposed to taking the hit by pitch off the shin. So here's the one two from Drakowski. Skips on in, runner goes, Thole fires to third, not in time. So Hennessy advanced on a somewhat of a wild pitch there and now steals third base on a pitch in the dirt. And now she stands at third, 60 feet away from home. Infield shallow, 2-2 from Durkowski, off speed. Just misses upstairs, count is full. So nobody out, and the leadoff hitter, Hennessy, is on third. Here's the 3-2 from Durkowski, rung her up. Ooh. Wilson checked the swing, and Durkowski painted the inside part of the plate. So a big first out there. Checking the score sheet. Hennessy's both of those advancements are, are scored as wild pitches for Lauren Durkowski, not stolen bags for Hennessy. And now it's Justice Malone, the freshman shortstop, who will try to drive in this run. Infield in again for Michigan. First pitch to Malone, misses from Durkowski. But that's just heads-up base running from Hennessy to read where those wild pitches are and just take advantage of it to advance 120 feet, and you're only 60 feet away from scoring your first run. Durkowski rocks. Here comes the 1-0. Caught the inside part of the plate. Durkowski seems to have that spot working for her right now. And again, this infield shallow. They're going to try to hold the runner Hennessy at third on a ground ball. One out. Here's the 1-1 one, one count to number one, Justice Malone. Same spot, same result. Inside part of the plate for a strike. Yeah, she seemed to have found a home on the inside part of the plate with both her lively fastball and the ability to pull the strain on the off speed. One and two. Here's the pitch. Off speed, dropped it in, rung her up looking again. Back to back, backwards K's for Lauren Durkowski. And now the Michigan infield retreats back. The force out gets them out of the inning and strands Hennessy at third. Ashley France, the nine hitter, the sophomore second baseman in the left-handed box, has to keep it going for Dartmouth. First pitch to her, swung on and missed. France, staggered stance, the left foot closer to home plate, the right foot toward first base, comes forward toward the pitcher as she swings. She swung there and missed it, so she's behind 0-1. At right foot, all the way on the chalk of the left-handed batter's box, here's the 0-1, takes it for a strike outside part of the plate. Wow. And that's that same spot on sort of the left side of the plate to a inside to a righty, outside to the lefty in France. And Durkowski now ahead 0-2. I mean, if the umpire established that as the strike zone, why not take advantage of it? She's certainly been doing that. 0-2, swung on and missed. So Hennessy aboard on a single, advances to third on two wild pitches. 
And Durkowski then strikes out three in a row to clear the inning. No score as we head to the bottom of the second. And the Michigan Bats get another chance to strike for the Maize and Blue. It's just so fun to watch Durkowski pitch with her lively fastball that we've seen top out at 70-71. And then her off-speed that just keeps hitters frozen. It, it, it makes it so easy for her to get out of jams when you know you have those two pitches always working for you. So Michigan will send up five, six, and seven. Valamont, Conway, and Stevenson. Redshirt freshman to be followed by two true freshmen. And another freshman behind them and Aaron Hain. Thanks for joining us this morning on WCBN Sports. I don't know, 10, 20, is that early on a Sunday morning? No. No? No. Uh, I don't know. It's a little. It's my homework day normally. Yeah, it can be a little early for me. Yeah. Depends on the day. Was up or up at eight today. Felt good. Got a good night's sleep. Yeah. And happy to be back here at Omer Stadium in Louisville for two more games today. There's this one against Dartmouth, and directly following it, or a half hour later, rather, Michigan will get a Big Ten preview game against the Illinois Fighting Illini. So Valamont taking some practice cuts. Bonnie Thole will trot out, trot out to her third base coaching box. Faith Canfield with the first base box for Michigan as Valamont digs in here. McCarroll, right-handed pitcher, works with right foot on the third base side of the rubber. Here's the first pitch to Valamont. Misses upstairs. Yeah, it might be a late night with St. Patrick's Day today for oh, yeah. some. So a late morning maybe, 1-0 pitch. That one in the zone against Valamont, one and one. Maybe some more people will wake up and join us for this morning game in a little bit, a little bit of time. Well, Dartmouth is celebrating St. Patrick's Day correctly, there. wearing green. Dartmouth in white jerseys, green font and green socks. That one in for a strike taken as well for Valamont. So she's behind one and two. The redshirt freshman from Trenton, Michigan. Missed all of last year with a season-ending injury and has been in the lineup every day for Michigan this season. Here's the one-two pitch to her. Ooh, took a close one there. And the bark never came from Michael Carby, the home plate umpire, so two and two. McCarroll checks her wristband, sets, rocks. Here's the two-two. And a similarly placed pitch in a similarly stone cold take from Lily Valamont as she works the count full on some close pitches. Some jeers came from some Dartmouth faithful, but counts full. Here's the three two. Valamont rips it toward the Michigan dugout foul. So we'll do it over three and two. I mean, you've, you've just seen up and down this lineup for the Wolverines, just them taking stone-cold takes. They'll always find the pitch that they want. Infield, outfield, straight up on Valamont. Here's another 3-2 ticker. Fouled back into the netting. So Valamont having a really good at-bat here. Fell behind, one and two, some good takes to bring it even. And now fouls off two pitches. McCarroll trying to find something to put away Lily Valamont. But the Mi Michigan redshirt freshman not giving in easily. McCarroll checks the wristband, grips the ball on her leg, now comes set. Here's the 3 2. Popped up foul territory, first base side. Nobody going to get there. The first baseman, Bo Prey, and the right fielder, Wilson, were the closest, but neither really got within probably a dozen feet of that softball. So we'll do it for a third time at three and two. Is it a fourth time? Three, two there, misses outside. What an at bat for yeah. Lily Valamont. Works a walk. An excellent eye from the Michigan first baseman. And now she's aboard at first base. And now it's Janisa Conway. So if you stuck with us yesterday in the blowout loss to Louisville, Conway came up twice after that game was already out of hand 
and crushed. crushed. And I mean crushed. Yeah. Two homers. Moon one shot. to right, one to center. Yeah. Here's the first pitch tour this morning. Ooh, big, big swing and a miss. I mean, I've never seen a softball that well hit. And Conway, yeah. back in Florida, had that big rip big, against yeah. Bethune Cookman, like a line drive that just kept on carrying. But that was a moonshot yesterday. Moonshot to right and center. 0-1, oh, oh, bunt squared around, pulled back. Valamont started to second. She might be caught in a pickle, dives back into second, or rather slides in, legs first, and she's in there safely. Beaupre couldn't corral a low throw to apply the tag. So Valamont still safely aboard at first base. Conway behind 0-2. She's tight to home plate in the left-handed batter's box. Here's the 0-2 pitch to her. On the ground, fouled weakly off to the first base side. So she now awaits another 0-2 pitch. Conway, the freshman, Olivehurst, California native. Michigan Wolverines starting center fielder in her true freshman season, an everyday player for Michigan. Here's the 0-2. Popped up foul toward the Michigan dugout on the third base side. It gets in the dugout. Look out. Everyone's safe, though, in there. So another 0-2 now coming for Conway. Valamont aboard at first off the walk. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. Here's the 0-2 again. Conway takes that one up and away for a ball, one and two. McCarroll checks the wristband, here's the one, two. Conway ropes it to right center. That's off the wall on a hop. Valamont being sent home. She's going to turn third. Throw comes into second. No throw to the plate. That's an RBI double for Janisa Conway. Picks up right up where she left off yesterday. Valamont scores from first. And the Wolverines take a 1 0 lead in the bottom of the second inning. Man, she's just continuing her power trip so far in this Cardinal Classic. Two home runs, an extra base hit, RBI double. And you're seeing some life in this Michigan offense in the second inning. Man, Conway's really established herself as a pivotal part of this team as a freshman. Absolutely, and now a fellow freshman, Ella Stevenson, has been the right fielder most days for Michigan this season. The bat has not yet come alive, but as she fouls off the first pitch to her to the first base side, but this is a bat that this Michigan staff is very high on, they believe can get going. Stevenson enters this one, only hitting 161. But the freshman from Algonac, Michigan, going to look to try to drive in a run here as Conway's aboard at second. Nobody out. Here's the 0 1. Squared around a bunt, lays it down. It's just foul. It was headed toward the left handed batter's box, and then instead of rolling fair, rolls just foul. So Stevenson behind 0-2, but don't count her out yet. Conway worked an 0-2 count after a couple foul balls, just roped a double. Let's see if Stevenson can try to find something similar. McCarroll checks the wristband, rocks, here's the 0-2 to Stevenson. Swung on and missed, and the tag applied on the drop third strike by the catcher Cahalen. Stevenson goes down swinging, one out now in the bottom of the second. That was a great pitch from McCarroll there. Great off speed in the dirt. They got Stevenson off guard. And now the third true freshman in a row comes up, Aaron Hain, the Poseyville, Indiana native. Here's the first pitch to her, upstairs. Hain, of course, a two-way player for Michigan in her freshman season, has been productive on the, in the circle. Got a little bit roughed up yesterday by the Louisville Cardinals, but has been really productive both in the circle and in the batter's box in her freshman season for Michigan. Here's the 1-0 pitch to her. Misses outside 2-0. Yeah, she's really coming to her own as a freshman. You know, tossed her first no-hitter against Bowling Green on the 10th. You're the first Michigan freshman to throw a no-hitter since 2018. So she's established herself as an anchor for this team. Here's the 2-0 pitch. 
that one in there for a strike outside part of the plate, two and one. Kane awaiting the 2-1 pitch with Conway standing on second. Here's the 2-1. Hit hard to center, going back, and it's off the wall. Conway is going to turn. She's going to head home. Hain easily in a second. Conway up standing at home. An RBI double for Conway left her on second. An RBI double from Haynes scores her. Two to nothing, Michigan. If it wasn't for that high wall in center, that would have been gone. But just great hitting, and you're seeing this offense click early which we haven't seen too much this season so far. And again, for whatever reason, Olivia Scram, the center fielder, yeah. started in on that ball. That's the second time she started in a ball from hit to center field and then had to go back and play it off a wall. And from my early time playing baseball, one Ugh. of the first things you're taught is your first two steps should always be backwards. And yeah. Scram twice has been caught going forward with line drives going over her head. Maddie Ramey going to go pinch run for Hain at second base, and she stands in scoring position now for Ella McVeigh. As the Wolverines look to extend this now two to nothing lead with these two runs coming in this frame, the bottom of the second. But even with that reaction by Sram, I don't think it would have mattered. It was too high off the wall to make a play. It was just an excellent contact by Aaron Hain there. McVeigh squared around a bunt. We see this a lot from her often. It's pulled back. She does pull back. First pitch to her. Tried to slap it, but swings through at 0-1. Sealer in the on-deck circle is swinging some kind of weighted wooden bat. Kind of an interesting... Yeah, I've seen that all, all weekend there. from her. 0-1 pitch to McVeigh. Takes it. Caught the outside part of the plate. 0-2. But once again, we've seen some damage from the Wolverines and Conway come 0-2. Let's see what McVeigh can do. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Ella McVeigh. Takes that one low, 1-2. One Outfield relatively shallow on the Wolverines' shortstop. McVeigh, such a staple to this Wolverine order, a a stout defensive shortstop. Hits for a good average. Here's the 1-2 pitch to her. Takes it away, 2-2. Two and two. Ella McVeigh's number 32. Dueling with Rachel McCarroll's number 23. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch to McVeigh. Popped up. The shortstop, Justice Malone, goes back. Makes the catch just on the edge of the infield dirt. Two down now in the bottom of the second. That'll turn it over though to the top of the order. Ellie Sealer will replace McVeigh in the left-handed batter's box. Matty Ramey pinch running for Aaron Haynes still stands aboard at second with two outs. Sealer looks to drive her in. Here's the first pitch to Ellie Sealer. Takes it for a strike, one and a, or 0 and 1, excuse me. O one 1 pitch, that one misses away to Ellie Sealer. Sealer, three doubles to her name this season, no triples or homers. Hitting 329 to start off what's been an excellent junior campaign so far. 1-1 one, one pitch, misses away. And she is just that reliable leadoff hitter for this Wolverine offense. But the unique thing is that there are three potential leadoff hitters. Sealer being the best, but you can argue, I mean, Indy Lanford has seen some leadoff hitting, and you can argue Ella McVay as well. 2-1, Sealer hard hit ground ball foul on the first base side. So now the count goes to two and two. So two, two count, two outs, bottom of the second inning. Runner on second base, Matty Ramey. This inning started, Valamont walked, made her way to second, or excuse me, scored from first on the Conway double, then Conway scored from second on the Hain double. Sealer. 
High fly to left center. Is anyone going to get there? Yes. Panu runs it down to left center field. Ali Sealer retired. But the Wolverines get two across in the bottom of the second. They lead it two to nothing. And that's something we haven't seen in this tournament, just early offensive production from the Wolverines. And they come alive in the second inning with two RBI doubles from the freshmen in Conway and Hayne. Lauren Durkowski back in the circle for Michigan. Thanks for joining us for this one. Get our first look at the broadcaster cam. TJ's rocking the aviators this the morning. The sun's right the sun in the broadcast continues booth, to rise. Yeah. It's coming up over it's coming up. over to my right and on the first base side. It's been a fun event so far. Michigan one and one in this invitational. Seeking a second win right now, and then they'll play Illinois afterward to seek another. Lauren Durkowski back in the circle for Michigan, continuing to look to shut down this Dartmouth lineup. So that's that's all for the broadcast that's game a, for oh, now. We'll, we'll, oh be, we'll be back later. We'll oh be yeah. back later. <laughs> so 2 0 Durkowski's first pitch this inning coming to the top of the order. Mary Beth Kahalen, she fouls it back behind home plate to my right. I got a feeling we're going to get a souvenir today. We're waiting for one. We've got these open windows in front of us. We're a little bit to the right of home plate behind it. You almost got one yesterday. One was a little bit short. A little Just short. A little bit more carry for me to stick my hands out the window to corral it. Oh, one to Kahalen. This is over our head. Yeah. If the, we didn't have a roof here, then we might have gotten the yeah. souvenir. Nevertheless, back to softball. It's an 0-2 count for Mary Beth Kahalen against Lauren Drakowski. Dirk stranded a runner at third last inning. She had three straight strikeouts to end that inning. 0-2 pitch here, misses away. 1-2 count. For Dartmouth this inning, it's Kahalen and the two-hitter Odie, the three-hitter Panu do up. Kahalen settles back into the right-handed batter's box. Dirkowski rocks, here's the 1-2 delivery, skips in, hit Kahalen on a bounce, and... That's still a hit by pitch, so Mary Beth Kahalen will make her way down to first, and that one just seemed to slip out of the hand, and yeah. of, hand of Lauren Drakowski, and it bails Kahalen out of what was for a moment there, a pitcher's count. Yeah, you rarely ever see Drakowski get behind in the count. She has this remarkable ability to get ahead and get herself to favorable counts. So now it's Alana Panu, sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, who will face Durkowski with the runner on first. Takes it for a strike. So Kahalen, the catcher, singled her first time up, and now on the hit by pitch, she's aboard in both of her two plate appearances early on in this one. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Odie. Popped foul out of play, first base side. And now Durkowski again ahead in this at-bat, 0-2 on Odie. Infield and outfield straight on on Odie. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fouled off again to the first base side. Lauren Durkowski pulls up the sleeve on her right arm now. Looks into the dugout for the sign, checks the wristband. Right foot on the third base side of the rubber. Left foot back, heel in the air. Runner on first. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Misses up and away. Nice job by Thole to get out of the crouch to backhand it. 1-2 and two now. Odie digs back in. Squares around a bunch. She'll pull it back with the 1-2 count. She does. Here's the 1-2. On the ground, Erickson coming in, goes to second. It's off of Langford's glove. And now Kahalen going to move up as well to third. 
So an error there, either on Erickson or Langford. Erickson came in to throw that ball to Langford and would have had Kahalen by a step or two, but yep. just was a little bit up past the second base bag and it popped away from Langford's glove. So an unfortunate turn of events there for the Wolverine defense, unable to help Lauren Durkowski out after she generated such a weak ground ball from Odie. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what you want, and that's what Dirk's been so special this year, just generating weak contact and allow your infielders to make plays. Unfortunately, whether that was an errant throw or a missed catch, you know, that's just an unfortunate situation for the Wolverines. So they'll rule it that Odie reached on the fielder's choice to go to second, and then Kahalen's advance was due to a fielding error by Indy Langford. But that's a really tough play for Langford, trying yeah. to stretch to that ball, keeping her foot on the bag to get the force out. So Bonnie Thole just visited Lauren Durkowski as we spoke there and tried to settle her down and settle this infield down. But now nobody out, runners on the corners for the three hitter, Alana Panu. Here's the first pitch to her, squared around a bunt, pulled it back, strike. They throw to second and she's safe. And the run from third goes home from Kahalen. An interesting decision there for Thole to fire it down with the runner on third. Langford tried to cut it off to throw it back home. It yeah. got past her to McVeigh, who couldn't apply the tag in time on the stealing Odie. So not much going right right now defensively for Michigan. In Dartmouth, through a hit by pitch and then a, an error, and then this attempt to throw to second plates a run. Two to one, Michigan. I mean, that's an interesting strategy from Dartmouth to kind of force Thole into a, into a decision. Do you throw it? With a chance to get the runner out, or you know, or the let the third baseman take or let the runner on third take advantage and score. One one is fouled off by Panu. I mean, it's interesting. Largely, the theory has been that you don't fire it down, or you fire it just to fire it back home to get the runner. Yeah. But no one cut that throw off. Langford wasn't getting there. It seemed like Thole's intent was to try to throw that runner out at second. But nevertheless, one, two count, a runner on second. Misses inside, does Durkowski. And there's a run on the board for the Dartmouth Big Green. Two, two count to Alana Pani. Lauren Durkowski rocks, here's the two, two pitch. High fly, way foul on the third base side. Made me look toward the Michigan bullpen. Aaron Hain is throwing. I highly doubt Michigan going to go to her this early, but she's yeah, a designated player in this one, keeping her warm. Here's the 2-2 pitch from Drakowski again. And it plunked on the elbow, Alana Panu. I'm questioning yeah, that. I don't so know is about that. Panu seemed to lean into that. And generally, you have to make the rule book is that you have to make a genuine attempt to get out of the way of the pitch. And it looks like Panu did the opposite, sort of leaning into that one, but that's a judgment call for the home plate umpire, Michael Carby. And it seems like he's gonna rule that a hit by pitch for Panu. He's now first had some words from Bonnie Thole, now chatting with the Dartmouth third base coach, and now he'll gather his true of umpires. Jeremy Carter, the first base ump, and Tyler Jesse, the third base ump, come out toward the circle to chat with Michael Carby about this decision. And to I, me, it seemed like Panu leaned into that one. Yeah, no, I would agree. Yeah, she didn't make any effort to avoid that. So I would, yeah, I would As someone agree. who's umpiring experience, ma maxed out at pony ball, so that would be <laughs> ninth graders at the oldest. I would say that I would have called that, brought that hitter back, and said, "You've got to, you can't lean into that one." But, but even if they and they will bring her back. Yep, that's the right call. But that would have been her third batter hit in this game. In this game for Drakowski, I think second or so. third. So in a way, a break there yep. as the umpires changed their call. I do think in the end they got it right. They got it right. But now Panu back to the right-handed batter's box in a 2-2 count. No outs here in this one. And a runner in Odie stands on second. 
So here's a 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. So a change of fortunes there goes from a hit by pitch call to a strikeout for Lauren Durkowski. It also, you know, thinking about our scoreboard, shouldn't that have been a 3-2 count because that pitch would have been ruled a ball if it's not a hit by right. pitch, and it was already 2-2. Scoreboard never changed it, and I didn't see a, I didn't see what numbers Michael Carvey, the home plate ump, put in the year. Nevertheless, a strikeout either way. First pitch to Olivia Scram misses mm. for a ball, 1-0. and So a bit of a weird sequence there, but... Really, it's been a weird inning. The way Dartmouth was able to sneak across a run was a bit odd, and then yep. a changed call from the crew, and now 1-0 pitch coming to Scram with a runner on second. Takes that one for a strike on the outside part of the plate, 1-1. One one. One, one count, here's the pitch. That one low, bounced on home plate, two and one. Scram will twirl the bat back up over the shoulder. Two one, here's the pitch from Drakowski. That one low as well, three one count. Two one was also our score in this one so far. We're in the top of the third. Michigan plated two in the second. Dartmouth has one across in the top of this third inning. And they look for more with a runner on second. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Scram. Misses inside. Olivia Scram works a walk. Two aboard now on Lauren Durkowski. Kiki Thole requests time. And is going to have a chat with Lauren Durkowski. It seems like Durkowski's and Thole's relationship is so special. And we saw in South Dakota in the South Dakota game, Thole had a meeting with Durkowski, and her fortune in that game completely changed. She shut out the next two innings after that meeting. So whatever Thole said in that meeting really worked. And I would bet the same thing. Just Thole is that reliable presence on the other side of the battery that a pitcher needs, you know, to help calm her down, settle those nerves, and just dial it in. So Thole back behind the dish. Here's the first pitch to Kelly Beaupre. Blooped foul, first base side. Valamont is there. Throws to second to try to get the moving runner in Odie. But Odie dives back in just in time. Heads up play, though, for Valamont to yeah. check on both runners. Scram at first was back in easily, but Odie had taken a big jump from second as if she was maybe going to steal third on that pitch or try to. But nevertheless, she's back to second, and the second out picked up on the foul pop. So now two outs, two aboard for Layla Hennessy. First pitch to her, off speed, misses from Durkowski. Layla Hennessy, a base hitter, first time up. Two aboard, two outs. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Durkowski, fouled off, out of play. That one actually escaped Omer Stadium here. Now a 1-1 count to Hennessy in the right-handed batter's box. Odie on second, Scram on first. Here's the 1-1 from Lauren Durkowski. Off speed, misses high, 2-1. and one. Durkowski sets back on the mound. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fouled off into the stands on the first base side. So now a 2-2 count. Two runners on, two outs, top of the third inning. Durkowski looking to keep this 2-1 game right where it is. Rocks, and here's the 2-2 pitch. On the ground, McVeigh, nice backhand. Thought about going to second, goes to first. And it is in Ooh. time. That was close. Excellent play by Ella McVeigh to pick that one on a hop with the backhand. And smart play also. She yeah. knew she couldn't get Scram at second and was able to put enough juice to get that ball to first in time. And as we head to this bottom of the third, we see a new pitcher for Dartmouth. 
it's the re it's the freshman right-hander Jensen Hall, the freshman from Frisco, Texas, has a 4.38 ERA over 30 and a third innings pitched this season. And these two pitchers, McCarroll and now Hall, are the only two Dartmouth has used all a year. Yep. Yeah, Jensen Hall, very decorated out of Texas, district MVP, all state team, and had over 700 strikeouts in her high school career. So she's a big addition to this Dartmouth team. Hall will face the heart of the Michigan order. 2 3 4, Indiana Langford, Matty Erickson, and Kiki Thole. Hall stands very tall in the pitching circle. Yeah, six foot one. So the freshman will try to keep this Dartmouth deficit at only one. 2 1 Wolverines. We're in the bottom of the third. Michigan rallied in the second to scratch two across. Dartmouth, weird sequence, last half inning to get one across. Here's the first pitch to Langford. She pulls back a bunt and lets the pitch go by for a ball outside. And I believe right now we have the tallest. Dartmouth player going against the shortest Michigan player. Sounds Over about right. Yep. <laughs> Five foot two Indiana Langford. Here's the 1 0 upstairs to Langford. The California native, the sophomore, had an excellent season a year ago in the Mason Blue as a freshman. Here's the 2 0 pitch to Langford. Let's that one go by. It's in the zone for a strike. Jensen Hall, third base side of the rubber. Works the righty. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Langford squared around a bunt, pulled it back. Pitch was in there for a strike. Mm. And after being ahead 2-0, the count's now 2-2. Two and two. Indiana Langford hits in a lot of two-strike counts. Here's her 2-2 pitch, her Hall's 2-2 pitch. Langford fouls it off to the third base side. Not a lot of swing and miss in the bat of Indiana Langford. Does a really nice job of putting that barrel over the plate and making contact, knocking things, knocking pitches foul. So 2-2 two -two again. Hall checks the wristband. Glove comes up over the head. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Langford again fouls it off to the third base side. So once again, a 2-2 count now for Indy Langford. Taps the plate, spins the bat up over the shoulder. Hall sets. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Langford lets it go by inside in low, 3-2 and two now. The Dartmouth catcher, Mary Beth Cahalan, tried to frame that one up. Michael Carby, the home plate umpire, wasn't buying what she was selling. Full count now. Here's the pitch from Hall to Langford. On the ground of the third baseman, Hennessy throw is just in time to get Langford by half a step. <clears throat> we always say it when Indy Langford's running down the line, but yeah. makes a lot of routine plays very interesting at first yeah. base, and that was one of them. But Langford retired, so now one out for Matty Erickson, who ripped a double to center field her first time up. Here's the first pitch to her from Hall. Hard hit, but Man. couldn't catch up to it. It's foul out of play on the right field side, but a lot of pop in the bat of number seven in the maize and blue, Maddie Erickson. Yeah, and she has this remarkable ability to just put balls in play. She's only struck out twice this season and walked once. Here's the 0-1, ripped wow. on a line, back up the middle, a bullet off the bat of Erickson, and... She continues what has been an excellent sophomore season. Maddie Erickson really has been the breakout player this season yep. among Michigan returners. Last year, played a fair bit. It designated player, both corner infield spots. Hit 235. She's sitting at 346 with a lot of pop this season. First pitch to Kiki Thole is upstairs, 1-0. 
But yeah, you mentioned it. Erickson only the one walk. So if you had to have yeah. one gripe with her performance this season, that she's not walking a ton. However, if you're hitting 346, it's hard to have any complaints about that. 1 0 pitch to Thole. Misses away 2 0. Yeah, and we've seen from Tampa, she or the from the first tournament in Tampa, she kind of struggled in that tournament, but she's really come alive since then. So it's been remarkable to see how she's really, you know, established herself as the leader for this offense. 2-0 to Thole misses in, so now a 3-0 big-time hitters count for the big-time bat of Kiki Thole. Thole spins the bat up over the shoulder. I'd imagine she's got the green light with the 3-0 count runner on first one out. Here's the pitch to her. Took it for a strike. 3-1. and one. The Kiki Thole is one of the most patient hitters in this Michigan lineup. She's, it always seems like she's in these hitters' counts that just she always – you know, plays to her advantage. A lot of experience in the seniors' bat. Here's the 3-1 pitch. In there for a strike. Jensen Hall paints the outside corner. And now, after falling behind 3-0, she's put this count full at 3-2. Thole taps the bat twice on home plate, spins it up over the shoulder. Erickson on first, one out. Here's the 3-2 ticker. Way upstairs, easy take for Thole, and she walks... And he'll trot down to, sec to first as Erickson trots down to second. So now, two aboard for Lily Valamont. And a familiar situation here with the runner in scoring position at second. And Erickson, Bonnie Thog, and a pinch runner. It's Lexi Delamonica, the birthday girl. There we go. Who will be out there at second with a chance to score a run. That'd be a nice birthday present, score a run. The freshman from Queen Creek, Arizona. Celebrating her birthday today. I mentioned it early on in the warm-up. She was wearing a pink sash over her shoulder. And she participated in warm-up drills wearing that. And that was kind of a nice sight. She's on second pinch running for Erickson. Thole at first, one out. Here's the first pitch to Lily Valamont. Takes it inside for ball one. I don't think we saw Durkowski wear that sash when she pitched against Florida in Tampa. Not I don't think that we saw I can that. recall. I don't remember that. Durkowski had an excellent performance yeah. on her birthday in Tampa. Ten innings pitch, nothing earned. 1-0 pitch to Valamont. In there for a strike, 1-1. One and, one. and Michigan has figured it out against Florida this season. With that first win in Tampa, then you know run ruling them in another tournament later on. They figured it out against that stacked team. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Valamont. On the ground, spinning to second, played by France, toss it to second. Malone fired down to first. She was never going to get Lily Valamont. Delamonica makes her way to third on that. So for an out, Del Delamonica moves up to third, and Valamont is an upgrade for Thole as a runner at first. And now the big bat of Janisa Conway who in her last three plate appearances has two homers and a ripped RBI double. So she's driven in five five runs, or five runs five I runs. believe, in three, three at-bats on three extra base hits. Takes the first pitch to her for a ball. She drove in all four yesterday on those two homers, a solo shot and a three-run shot. Drove in one with a double earlier. Now big spot with runners on the corners and two outs. Here's the 1-0 pitch from Hall upstairs to Conway. So Valamont on first on that fielder's choice. They got Thole at second. Delamonica, who pinched run for Erickson, made her way to third on that sequence. So runners on the corners. 2-0, two outs. Here's the pitch. And Conway lets that go by. So 3-0. and So interesting spot here for Hall. Has it gave him with anything too good? And with two outs, you could load the bases here if you walk Conway and yeah. bring up and as opposed to the red hot bat of Conway, a somewhat colder bat, Nella Stevenson. And misses inside, yeah. and there it is, a four pitch walk for Conway. You've got to wonder if that was intentional or not. Yeah. Hall seemed a little disappointed on that last pitch, so maybe it wasn't, but perhaps it wasn't the worst thing in the world no. to walk no, Conway. But for Michigan, you have the bases loaded two outs, and this is a big time spot. And Ella Stevenson wants to break out and start turning her season around in her freshman year. This would be a really good moment 
to barrel something up. Yeah, we have seen her come up clutch in some of these moments. I believe in Tampa we did see her come up big in a game, scoring a few runs. So she certainly has that ability to, and this would be a great way to, you know, get over the hump, get over those struggles that we've seen so far in this early stretch of the season. The catcher, Mary Beth Cahalen, went and had some words of advice with her freshman pitcher, Jensen Hall. Stevenson went and chatted with Bonnie Tholder. Everyone's back now. First pitch to Stevenson in there for a strike. Ellis Stevenson steps out of the batter's box, takes a practice, practice swing. The freshman from Algonac, Michigan. Bases loaded, two outs. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Big cut from Stevenson. And she's behind 0-2. She fell behind 0-2 in her last at-bat as well. So now, Hall, a strike away from stranding three, misses outside one and two. 2-1 Michigan, both those two runs came across last half, in, last inning. Dartmouth got a run back in the top of the third. Now in the bottom of the third, bases loaded, two outs for Michigan. Here's the one-two pitch to Ella Stevenson. Swung out and missed, it's in the dirt and through the legs of the catcher. The run's gonna come across and Stevenson makes her way to first. So a drop third strike scores Lexi Delamonica. Birthday gift. So the birthday Scoring gift, the perhaps run. that's what there it was. Go. What should have been an out brings home Delamonica on her birthday. And Stevenson catches a break. Big break. And the bases are still loaded. And now it's 3-1 Michigan. Aaron Hain is going to bat. Bonnie Thole had to share the stats with the home plate umpire Michael Carby that Hain, who was previously pinched run for by Maddie Ramey, is back in her spot at designated player. And Carby checking over the substitutions with the Dartmouth side. But boy, a break there. Stevenson yeah. chased a pitch low and missed it and just got lucky that on the hop it skipped through the catcher Mary Beth Cahalen's legs. So 3-1 Wolverines. Base is still loaded for Aaron Hain. First pitch to Hain, way upstairs. Nice job by Cahalen that time, coming out of the crouch mm -hmm. to get up for it. So 1-0. and oh. Aaron Hain on the season, five doubles, has not yet hit a college homer. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Hain. That one in the zone with a fastball, 1-1. One one. She was about three feet away, though, from her first collegiate home run if that was if it wasn't for that high wall across this whole stadium it's a very high wall Hain roped a double an RBI double her first time up an inning ago here's the one one pitch to her takes it for a strike low part of the plate Hain didn't seem to like it one and two Hall back on the third base side of the rubber with the right foot left foot back heel in the air rocks here's the one two pitch Misses low and in, two and two. If Hain were to reach, Ella McVeigh, the nine hitter, due to follow her. Bases loaded, two outs, bottom of the third inning, 3-1 Michigan, 2-2 count to the freshman designated player, Aaron Hain. Here's the 2-2 pitch to her, popped up, shallow right center, and it's called and made, catch is made by the freshman, Quen Wilson. So Michigan gets one on the drop third strike. Hall did a really nice job pitching with the bases loaded. Yeah. Got what should have been an, an inning ending strikeout, if not for it sneaking through the legs of Cahalen and then generates the weak fly from Hain to strand three. Michigan leads three to one as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, just a big break for the Wolverines, big break for Stevenson who, you know, who swung on a very low pitch, but Fortunate for the Wolverines, they were able to scratch across a run on it. Lauren Durkowski back in the circle for Michigan. I believe I see Janella Lockwood taking reps at second base right now. Yeah. So she's in there for the moment for Indiana Langford. We'll see if next time Langford comes up to bat if she's back in there. Outfield is the steady group, Sealer in left, Conway in center, Stevenson still in right. And the rest of the infield the same as well. Erickson at the hot corner, 
Valamont to the cold corner. McVeigh joins Alakwa up the middle as McVeigh at short and Alakwa taking over at second. Thole still behind the dish. Durkowski will face 7 8 9. Quen Wilson, Justice Malone, and Ashley France for Dartmouth. So Wilson will get ready to dig into the right-handed batter's box. Home plate umpire Michael Carby takes the time to dust off home plate. And Wilson will dig in against Lauren Durkowski. Here's the first pitch from Durkowski. Swung on and missed. Big, Big cut punt. from Wilson. Michigan infield, standard depth. Outfit in, infield straight on for the Wolverine defense. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Durkowski to Wilson. Another big swing and another swing and a miss. 0-2. And, and Durkowski's so good at generating that swing and miss. So far she has six Ks. So she's been excellent in this one. 0-2, Durkowski working quickly. Rocks, here's the pitch. Check swing, Ooh. runner up looking. Three pitch strikeout to open up the frame for Lauren Durkowski. And that's her seventh of the day. So 10 outs have been made so far in this game and seven of them are strikeouts. Jeez. She's just remarkable to watch. Justice Malone digs in. First pitch to Malone, swung Ooh. on and missed way wow. out in front as Durkowski went to the off speed pitch. Yeah, she certainly pulled the turn on that off speed way out in front. So now ahead of Malone, 0 and 1. Drakowski working quickly in a rhythm here. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Malone. That one looked good, but just misses on the outside part of the plate. So there goes Drakowski's quest for an immaculate inning. <laughs> so 1 and 1 now to, to Malone. Drakowski sets. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Off speed, wow. and Malone, just like she was on the first pitch of the at bat, way out in front. And now she's behind one and two to Lauren Durkowski, the Wolverine junior ace. Sets, here's the one-two pitch. Popped up to left center, Sealer shades over, makes the catch with ease, and two down in the top of the fourth. Yeah, that made a weird sound off the bat. I think she just got that off the tip of the bat, but still made great contact. But Dirk really got her out in front on multiple pitches. In that at bat. Now two down for the nine hitter Ashley France. First pitch to France. In there for a strike. Outside part of the plate to the lefty France. France, the sophomore, having a really good start to this season. 348 so far. Here's the 0-1 pitch to her. Swings and misses at that one. And she's behind 0-2. And, Takes some practice cuts. Now steps back in to the left-handed batter's box. Drakowski, here's the 0-2 pitch. Misses away. 2-2. Two and two. Michigan infield straight on. Janisa Khan with a center fielder. Shading a little bit to left center. Against the left-handed hitter, France, going might go opposite field. One-two pitch. She does go opposite field on a line right at the well-placed Ellie Sealer. So smooth sailing in the top of the fourth inning for Lauren Durkowski as she shuts the Dartmouth bottom of the order down. One, two, three. Yeah, she certainly found her groove. You know, with that, you know, with that first strikeout and then just two quick outs there. She certainly found her groove, and she's just amazing to watch. Just. The ability to use her fastball so effectively and to pull the string on the off speed, as we've seen, and, that ju and just that last frame, just keeping hitters way, way in front or even way behind that we've seen, just keeping them really off balance. If you're just joining us, thanks for tuning in to WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan softball. We're down in Louisville, Kentucky for... Game 304, there's another one coming right after this one against the Illinois Fighting Illini. 
So far in this one, Michigan leads it three to one. They played it two in the second inning off of some doubles from Conway and Hain, and then got another in the bottom of the third off the drop third strike, swinging strikeout for Stevenson with the bases loaded that Delamonica came home on. Dartmouth got their lone run on a bit of a weird sequence of their own with some Michigan defensive mishaps, and now we are 3-1 in the bottom of the fourth. Michigan will have 9-1-2, so three pretty... Darn good contact hitters, and Ella McVeigh, then Ali Sealer, then Janella Lakwa, but I'm guessing it'll be Indiana Langford back there. Here's the first pitch to McVeigh upstairs. Sealer drags the bat across home plate, shows bunt, often does, she pulls it back 1-0. Takes it for a strike outside part of the plate. One and one to the junior from Iowa. Steady presence at shortstop for Michigan. Shows bunt here. Hall rocks. McVeigh pulls it back. One one slapped foul over the head of the Michigan dugout on the third base side. One and two. Here's the one-two pitch. Skips in, landed about a couple feet in front of home plate before bouncing up toward the catcher, Mary Beth Cahalen. 2-2 two -two count now to Ella McVeigh. The center fielder, Olivia Scram, over toward left center against the slap hitting McVeigh. Jensen checks the wristband, sets. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Upstairs, McVeigh checked the swing, let it go by. And has worked the count full to three and two. That's the number on her jersey, 32. So full count, Hall rocks. Here's the three, two pitch. Fouled off by McVeigh, just stuck the bat out and knocked it foul. McVeigh scrapes some dirt out under her left foot, tries to settle into the left-handed box. Here's another 3-2 pitch. McVeigh mm. thought that missed low and away, started toward first, but Michael Carby rung her up behind the dish and McVeigh goes down looking on some apparent paint on the corner. From Hall. So now it's Sealer. Alakwa is in the on-deck circle, so it appears she is in there for Indy Langford from here on out. Here's the first pitch to Sealer. That one in for a strike inside part of the plate to the left-handed hitter, Sealer. Sealer taps the outside part of the plate. Now the bat up. Hands around head high. Here's the 0-1 pitch to her. Takes it low and away, 1-1. One and one. Third baseman, Hennessy in. The shortstop, Malone, back. Similar setup on the other side of the infield. 1-1 one, one on the ground. France to her knees to make the play and does and tosses it to first in time to retire Sealer. So two outs now for Janelle Alakwa, who's in there for Indiana Langford. Alakwa last year started... 23 games at second base before a season-ending injury. Hit 270 to that point. As here's the first pitch, Tours blooped to third base and caught by Hennessy. That'll end the inning, but just a quick tidbit. Alakwa has not a, had a ton of plate appearances this season. Only one for 16 to this point. Make that one for 17 with that flyout. But she is a bat that had some track record of success. Had a really good start to her freshman season a year ago for Michigan. But that'll do it for the fourth. We'll head to the top of the fifth inning. Three to one Wolverines. Yeah, and this is exactly where Michigan wants to be, be ahead. You know, early on, 
you know, and then just making it easier for themselves. It's like against South Dakota, that was a win's a win, but they did not make it easy for themselves in that valiant last inning effort to walk it off. A really up and down day yesterday for Michigan. Yeah. The the bats struggled against South Dakota early and then down 3 0 in the bottom of the seventh, found something special and played it four in a walk off win. Man, that was fun to see. And then against Louisville, a rare time that this Michigan pitching staff got blown up and gave up 12 and got mercied after five by the run rule. And now today in this one, up 3-1 in the top of the fifth over the Dartmouth Big Green. Lauren Durkowski back in the circle. We are back on the broadcast cam for a little while here in the, <laughs> as we head toward the fifth inning. Durkowski, a good Michigan defense behind her. Erickson at third, McVeigh at short, Alakwa now at second, Valamont at first. Thole joins Durkowski in the battery. Your outfield left to right, Ellie Seeler, Denisa Conway, and Ella Stevenson in right. Erickson, excuse me, Durkowski will face Kahalen, Odie, and Panu, the top of this Dartmouth order. As we say goodbye to the broadcast cam as we get back underway here. Here's the first pitch to Mary Beth Kahalen. Off speed in there for a strike from Lauren Durkowski. Durkowski, right foot on the rubber, digs the left toe in behind it. Rocks, here's the 0-1 pitch. Ooh. That one inside, almost got a piece of Kahalen. Yeah, but Durkowski has really found a home uh, inside part of the plate. Unfortunately, you know, Blue didn't call that in their favor, but she's really found that Inside part of the plate for righties and outside for the lefties. 1-1 one, one is Sky to right center. Conway tracking it, and she makes the catch there on the jog in right center field. And the leadoff hitter, Kahalen, retired to begin the top of the fifth inning. So now it'll be Ali Odie, the sophomore. He's 0 for 2 so far. Reached on a fielder's choice her last time up, though. She squares around a bunt. The Michigan corner infielder is not biting. She pulls it back and takes the first pitch for a ball. But Erickson playing really as deep as anyone we've seen. Two steps behind the third base bag. They're not buying this bunt from Odie. She shows it. And then Drakowski rocks, pulls it back again. 1-0 pitch. Skied to right field. Stevenson has it about a step in front of the warning track. Makes the catch. So Odie, a little too much air under that one. And two quick outs to begin the top of the fifth for Lauren Durkowski. So now Alana Panu will look to get it started here for Dartmouth with two outs in the top of the fifth inning. Durkowski rocks, here's the first pitch. Off speed, dropped it in. Panu started her step sort of toward Home to start that swing way early. Didn't go around, but was out in front in her movement. 0 and 1 now. Here's the pitch from Durkowski. Ooh. Swung on and missed on a low pitch there from Lauren Durkowski. That's what she's been doing all day, keeping these Dartman hitters way out in front. We've seen that about 10 times today. Just her off speed and the ability to pull the strains is really impressive to see. So two outs, 0-2 pitch coming. Durkowski rocks, here's that 0-2. It is cranked, but foul. That's over the wall in left field, but a fair bit left of the foul pole. Panu barreled that one up just out in front, so yeah. we'll do it over at 0-2. Here's Back in the box now is Panu. 0-2 pitch, Drakowski rocks, misses away. One and two now. Drakowski shakes out the shoulder, right foot on the rubber, left foot back, toe in the ground, heel in the air. Sets, rocks and delivers the one-two pitch. Out in front, fouls it off again, does Panu. Matty Erickson will jog out to 
left field to beat Ellie Sealer to retrieve that ball. And another 1-2 coming with two outs, nobody aboard in the top of the fifth inning. Dierkowski sets, here's the 1-2 pitch on the ground. Alakwa comes over, nice stop, and the throw is in time with ease. Nicely done by Janelle Alakwa, ranging over toward the first base bag to retire Panu. The top of the Dartmouth order goes down, 1-2-3, just as last inning, the bottom of the order went down, 1-2-3. And now we'll head to the bottom of the fifth as the Michigan Bats look to extend this lead. You got the heart of the order coming up, as well with Erickson, Thole, and Valamont. But Dirk has really found her groove, retiring six straight. I think it's actually nine straight. She had those three strikeouts. Oh, right. To end the third after the run sneaked, snuck across. So bottom of the fifth coming up. Thanks for joining us on WCBN Sports. I'm Alex Miller alongside TJ Fossmeyer. A pleasure to be in Louisville, Kentucky following Michigan softball. We'll be here for this afternoon as well. Michigan, a second game, a half hour after the conclusion of this one against Illinois. Really looking forward to that one. A bit of a Big Ten preview yep. against the Fighting Illini. But first, this game still in the balance. Michigan up three to one on the Dartmouth Big Green. A chance to build on that with the heart of the order coming up. It's three, four, five. The big bats of Matty Erickson, Kiki Thole, and Lily Valamont do up for the maize and blue. Erickson first, she's two for two today, a double and a single, both hit to center and both hit on a line. Paul set, first pitch of the frame to Erickson is fouled back off the netting. If you take away the netting, maybe yeah. we have a chance of a souvenir. I think it's a little bit to our left, but yeah. might have been close. It's got to just get over the netting. It's got to, you got to hit it right to get a souvenir. Erickson will twirl the bat up over the shoulder, hands around shoulder level, a little bit higher now. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Erickson. That one up and away, 1-1. One one. Erickson looks to Bonnie Thole coaching, coaching third for the sign. Hall checks the wristband, works the third base side of the rubber. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch upstairs, 2-1. and one. Maddie Erickson, a lot of pop in this bat. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fouled off an inside pitch, back and up, up, up over the netting, over our heads in the press box behind home plate. So now the count even at two and two to Maddie Erickson. She's leading off this inning, 3-1 Michigan in the bottom of the fifth. All sets, and here's the 2-2. Erickson on a rope to left center. That's got a chance to go, wow. and it's out of here in a hurry. Maddie Erickson with a rocket out to left center field. And she extends this Michigan lead to four to one. Man, that was well struck. I mean, that was on a line. Just a missile to left center field. That got out in a hurry. She's having herself a day. Maddie Erickson is having herself a day. And that was a little home run competition between Maddie Erickson and Janissa Conway tied with four. For the team lead, the team lead so far this season. So now Kiki Thole will dig in. Nobody aboard as Jensen Hall looks to settle down in the circle. Here's the first pitch to Thole, low and inside for ball one. If you talk about showing power, Erickson flashed some big time yeah. muscle on that blast. Thole will look to follow. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fouled back on a big cut. That Erickson homer knocked off a flat, hit a, hit a flag pole out there in left center, an ACC flag flying above it. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch to Thole, misses low and away. Yeah, that was just a frozen rope out of here. She got all of that one. 
4-1 Wolverines after that solo shot. Here's the 2-1 to Kiki Thole. Up and in, 3-1. and one. So Kiki Thole, we keep saying it, a very patient hitter, and she's got another hitter's count, 3-1 and one against the Dartmouth freshman pitcher, Jensen Hall. Hall checks the wristband, rocks, here's the 3-1 pitch. Thole half swung, and it's a swinging bunt to the pitcher. Hall cleans it up on the throw to first, easy play. You gotta imagine Kiki Thole wished she held up on that one, and Pitch was low and away, didn't commit with a full swing, and Thole's retired. Yeah, just an unfortunate, unfortunate circumstance there. Just get enough of that for that to leak into fair territory. So now one out for Lily Valamont. Here's the first pitch to her, in there for a strike. Valamont's got a walk and then reached on a fielder's choice. Two doubles to her name this season, two homers. Average has been climbing steadily as of late. This one has popped up out of play to my right. There's the thud. There's the thud, a little bit caught some roof. And Valamont now behind 0-2 with one out here. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Ooh. Big swing and a miss. Hall strikes out Lily Valamont. And now two outs, and Janissa Conway will come up with the base paths empty. Conway, an RBI double and a walk for a productive day for the Michigan center fielder. First pitch to her, checked her swing, and it caught her on the elbow. So she's granted first base on a hit by pitch. So a really good day for Janissa Conway aboard all three trips to the dish. It's really good last five at bat stretch for Conway. Two home runs, a double, a walk, and a hit by pitch, reach base. Ella Stevenson had started to was in the on deck circle, and now she's returned to the dugout, and Bonnie Thole is checking in with Michael Carby and the Wolverines will go to a pinch hitter and Avery Fantucci. So that's an interesting decision. It was going to be Stevenson, but when, then when the runner got on in Conway, Thole changes her mind and goes with Avery Fantucci. And for Stevenson, she'll keep getting her chances and there's some pop in that freshman's bat and Bonnie Thole and Michigan Faithful can Keep hope and faith that Ella Stevenson is going to turn this season around. But for now, this at-bat will go to Avery Fantucci, the sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. Here's the first pitch to Fantucci. In there for a strike. Conway, the runner at first, stunted to second, retreated though. So Fantucci behind 0-1. Hitting 118 so far this season and Limited, limited play to 10. It's a versatile defender. 0-1 pitch is fouled back. Fantucci had some really nice defensive plays at shortstop and at third base when we were down in Tampa. Yeah. I mean, two game-saving plays against Florida to keep them alive. She's behind 0-2 here. Two outs with Conway aboard at first. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Hall. Fantucci started to swing. Did she go around? Yes, she did, says first base umpire Jeremy Carter. So Fantucci is the pinch hitter, strikes out. But Michigan gets one across, the leadoff hitter in this inning, Maddie Erickson, roped a bomb to left center field to make this Michigan lead three, four to one ball game as we head to the top of the sixth, back in the circle, going to work, Lauren Durkowski. One Michigan in the top of the sixth inning. Durkowski has been her usual self in the circle for Michigan. Five innings pitched, two hits. The one run was unearned. Only one walk. 
seven strikeouts. Couple hit by pitches mixed in as well, but overall it's been the same Lauren Durkowski, the Michigan Wolverine faithful have come to expect, and that is a shutdown pitcher. We talked about this a bit at the top of the broadcast, and I'm again still a little surprised that Bonnie Thole didn't elect to save Durkowski for the second game today against Illinois. Maybe we'll see Durkowski anyways, but yeah. if they were just going to have her start once to get some other pitching reps for Hain and perhaps LeBeau after her weird experience yesterday, yeah. I would have thought they would have ran out Durkowski against Illinois. First pitch of the inning is a strike to Olivia Scram. And you made a good point, you know, Bonnie Phil might want to give Aaron Haynes some Big Ten reps because I don't think in the Big Ten schedule Michigan's not going to see Illinois. So this is the only time they're going to see him this season outside of a potential Big Ten tournament matchup. So giving her Big Ten reps, giving Aaron Haynes Big Ten reps, you know, as a freshman this early on could be pivotal. 0-1 pitch off speed dropped in for a strike. Durkowski ahead of Scram 0-2. Graham, a hit by a pitch and a walk to her name, so still 0 for 0. 0 for 2, rung up on the off speed. Scram was out in front, checked the swing, but Durkowski was able to drop that one in the zone. A pretty off speed pitch for Lauren Durkowski. I believe that's 10 straight retired for Lauren Durkowski. Yeah. Now it's Kelly Beaupre. Here's the first pitch to her from Durkowski upstairs. Beaupre, the most dangerous hitter in this Dartmouth order, enters this at bat hitting 321, some pop as well. Here's the 1-0 pitch to her. Off speed is dropped on in again by Lauren Durkowski, one and one now. I don't know which pitch I like from Durkowski more, that fastball or off speed, it just, both are so potent. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch to Beaupre. That one misses inside, 2-1. and one. Go seven. Two, one now, one out here after Graham struck out to begin the inning. Here's the 2-1 pitch from Durkowski. Off speed and it's again in the zone looking, 2-2. Two and two. Beaupre steps out of the batter's box, teeps, takes a deep breath now. After a look at her bat, steps back in. Two and two count. Here's the pitch from Durkowski. Fouled off on the ground, fouled third base side. Sealer will run it down. Two, two count. One out, top of the sixth inning. Michigan leads it four to one. Been a solid all-around performance from Michigan. Here's the 2-2 from Lauren Durkowski. Swing and a miss. Went upstairs and in. Beaupre went fishing and couldn't catch anything. So now two outs. And Layla Hennessy will dig in. Durkowski sets, rocks, here's the first pitch to Hennessy, misses outside. Outfield, infield, straight on, on Hennessy. Here's the 102 or from Durkowski, up and in, and a swing and a miss from Hennessy. A very similar pitch to the one we just saw Beaupre strike out on. And now she'll take a moment to go chat with her third base coach. The staff of this Dartmouth squad led by head coach Jen Williams in her sixth season. She was before that the head coach of MIT for eight years. Joined by assistant, head, assistant coaches Sydney Benz, Ashley Weingartz, and volunteer assistant coach Sarah Goodman. Kurkowski will get some high fives during the intermission from the left side of Renfield, McVeigh, and Erickson. And now Hennessy will relax the shoulders and dig back in. One and one is the count. Two outs here in the top of the six. Here's the pitch from Durkowski. Off speed. Mm. And another looking pitch for a strike. 
These Dartmouth hitters have not taken a lot of cuts at the off speed this frame, and no. Joukowsky keeps putting it in the zone. Yeah, they've just been letting it flow right by him. Here's the one-two pitch from Drakowski and drops wow. another off speed in mm. there. And Hennessy goes down looking, watches it go by. And Drakowski has retired 12 straight. Yeah, her last runner was in the third inning on that fielder's choice. That weird play, I believe, by McVay. And then her last hit was in the second on a Hennessy single. So, I mean, she's just been putting on a master class against this Dartmouth big green team. For Michigan, due up 8-9-1 now in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hayne, McVeigh, and then the top of the order, Ellie Sealer. Jensen Hall back in the circle for Dartmouth. As we mentioned one time earlier, Dartmouth has only used two pitchers all season. We saw Rachel McCarroll get the start. Henson came in in the third. So she'll go the rest of the way unless the big green go to someone who hasn't thrown this season. And this bottom of the sixth could be the Wolverines' final ops if they can hold on to the lead in the top of the seventh. I mean, with only ha having two pitchers, I don't know, it makes me question, why did they pull McCarroll so early? I mean, what was that? The, I think Hall started in the bottom of the third. I think it's that's just an interesting, right. It's just an interesting choice. And this is Dartmouth's last game of the weekend. They played two yesterday hmm. and one on Friday. They played South Dakota twice, beat them on Friday, lost to them on Saturday, and lost to Illinois as well yesterday. Hain digs in, first pitch to Aaron Hain, misses up and in, way up and in. So Hain will try to settle back down. So Michigan up four to one, they'll look to try to extend this lead here in the bottom of the sixth to give some more insurance to Lauren Drakowski in the top of the seventh. Hall drops that one in for the strike on the outside part of the plate, one and one now to Aaron Hain, the freshman from Poseyville, Indiana. Hall checks the wristband, hands go up over the head. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Hain swings and misses at that one. One and two is the count. Infield and outfield straight on. And outfield playing Hain pretty deep. A lot of room in left and left center and right center. Here's the 1-2 pitch to Hain. Popped up right over my head. Take a little air off that ball. And there's our souvenir we keep talking about. Mm. Hain a little bit too much juice on the foul pop back. And... Now it's one and two. For the leadoff hitter in the inning, the eight hitter Aaron Hain. One, two pitch, swung on and missed. Aaron Hain goes down with a big cut. And Hall retires the first batter of this Michigan inning. That'll turn it to Ella McVeigh. Ellie Sealer due to follow. McVeigh taps the Back to home plate twice, twirls it up over the shoulder. Bit of a staggered stance from the Wolverine shortstop. First pitch to her. Caught the outside part of the plate for strike number one. Infield creeping in on McVeigh. Third baseman Layla Hennessy in the tightest. Here's the 0-1. McVeigh squared around a bunt, pulled it back, let the pitch go by, and it missed outside, one and one. McVay steps out, now digs back in. Same two taps to home plate, one on the left side, one on the right side. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. That one low, 2-1 count now to Ella McVay. Just all day, Michigan has worked into some very f uh, favorable hitters counts across this whole lineup. 2-1, here's the pitch to McVay. Upstairs, she's ahead three and one. Last time up, she struck out looking at a full count on a pitch she thought was a ball outside. She started down before she was rung up by the home plate umpire, Michael Carby. She's ahead three one this time. Here's the pitch from Hall. And that mm. one, a similar exact yeah. move, a close pitch. McVeigh started a sort of shuffle down the line before Carby 
gave the bark in the fist to bring her back, and now it's a full count to Ella McVeigh. Squares around a bunch, she'll pull it back. Here's the 3-2, fouls it back. That pitch looked outside. McVeigh fights it off, stays alive. Call back on the rubber before McVeigh is back in the box. Now she re-enters. Shows bunt. It'll come back, and there it does. And another mm. nice job getting a piece of that yep. pitch on the outside part of the plate. Knocks it back foul again. Ella McVeigh battling right now in her third at-bat of this ball game. Yeah, it's two outside pitches. She took a take on, but well, she just got a piece of it to stay alive. We'll do it over at three and two. Here's the full count ticker. Popped up to shallow center, and that's wow. gonna drop for a base hit. Olivia Scram was coming in and could not get there. So a base hit for Ella McVeigh. And now that'll turn it over to the top of the order with one out and a runner aboard at first base in Ella McVeigh. Yeah, I just found a perfect gap right in between second, short, and, and center. I'm not sure if Scram didn't read that correctly or not. It seemed like she oh, was going up slow for that one, but it just found the perfect gap, and there's a runner on with one out. Ellie Sealer replaces McVeigh in the left-handed box. First pitch to her misses outside. Ellie Sealer 0 for 3 today. Perhaps she's due for a hit. Here's the 1-0 pitch to her. Fouled back off the netting. Janella Lacqua in the on-deck circle to follow Ellie Sealer. Ball checks the wristband, sets rocks. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That one in the zone for a strike. McVeigh stunted towards second, retreats. And now one and two is the count. With one out and a runner on first here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Michigan leading four to one. Here's the one-two pitch. End of the back round at a short. Goes to second. Mm. Does Malone and just got the yeah. sliding McVeigh. Not by much. No. It was a close play. I initially thought she was safe. So the big green chopped down the lead runner in Ella McVeigh. Ellie Sealer stands on first after the fielder's choice. And now Janelle Alakwa will look to keep it going with two outs and a runner on first for Michigan. Here's the first pitch to Alakwa. Popped up, staying in the infield. It's called off by the shortstop, Justice Malone. She makes the catch. And that'll end the inning. So Michigan will go to the top of the seventh, up four to one as they look to close this one out with a win. It's just, it's just been an all around great performance for Michigan so far. With Dirk having a master class in, in the circle, great offensive production. I mean, just a great rebound game from a very disappointing game against Louisville last night. And Michigan has felt in control in this one. They yeah. took the early 2-0 lead, which is something they didn't do in either game yesterday. And, and the other thing is the power production has been a nice sight. The Wolverines only have six hits. Yeah. But when two of those are homers and – or excuse me, it's just the one Erickson homer. Yeah. Just, but then, the, then doubles the, the doubles from do damage. Hain and from Conway yeah. can keep moving runners around quickly. Yeah, I mean they they're efficient, you know, when it comes to you know hits for runs and you know they make the I mean they just make damage. So four one Wolverines is the maize and blue look to close this one out with a victory. Dirkowski high fives all around from the Wolverine infield. One more time, left to right in the infield, Erickson, McVeigh, Alakwa, Valamont, Thole behind the dish, left to right in the outfield, Sealer, Conway. And I believe that is...
keep you updated on who's in right field at the moment. I think that's, yes, that's still Stevenson. You can see the 25 now. 0-1 to Quen Wilson is fouled off the netting. Durkowski ahead of her 0-2. So Wilson is struck out looking both of her first two at bats against Durkowski. She's behind 0 2. Here's the pitch. Fouled off on the ground, third base side. So Durkowski will go at her again ahead 0 and 2. Over we'll infield standard depth. Infield and outfield straight on against the freshman, Quen Wilson. Here's the 0-2 pitch again. That one low and in for a ball, one and two. One, two count. Here's the pitch to Wilson. Ooh. Close pitch on the outside part of the plate. Kiki Thole kept the glove out and extended for a good extra couple seconds to see if the bark would come from Michael Carby. He never gave the call. So it's even at 2-2 two and two to Quen Wilson. Durkowski rocks. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Wilson fouls it off. Wilson putting up a nice fight there right now in the right-handed batter's box. You know, that's all Dartmouth needs to do, make Durkowski work for these outs. You know, for the last three innings, Dirk has been easily going through this lineup. Here's the 2-2 on the ground, past the diving glove of Matty Erickson, splits Erickson at McVeigh, and Wilson offers the big green a sense of hope with a leadoff single to begin the top of the seventh inning. But that's the first base runner that Dirk has allowed since the third inning. And the first hit since the second inning. So overall, just great performance from Durkowski. So now it's Justice Malone. Durkowski allows her first hit and first base runner in quite a while. She'd retired 12 straight up until that single from Wilson. Wilson is now pinch run for by number 17, A.J. Pant. So Pant's an interesting player, not fully listed on the roster, and after a, some Googling by m the research department, a.k.a. me, <laughs> I sh found Pant also listed as a member of the Dartmouth women's rugby squad. She's in there as a pinch runner now. Bunt squared on my loan. It's popped up. Valamont caught it, and she's going to double off Pant, who never saw it at first base. So nicely done wow. by Lily Valamont. Great play. Panted, took off on the bunt. I think they were trying to move her up into scoring position. And Malone just popped it up. And Valamont did a nice job charging in to get it and turn, easy job to turn two. So now two outs, empty base paths for France, the nine hitter. Swinging bunt on the ground. Might be a base hit. Erickson barehands the throw is not in time. So basically that's where you want the bunt place. Yeah. You split the catcher, third baseman, and pitcher down the third base line. And France aboard on a swinging bunt with two outs. Well, now the lineup flips over to the top of the order. You know, the big green have a chance. So top of the order, Mary Beth Cahalen, two outs. Durkowski and out away from a Michigan win. Here's the first pitch to Cahalen. That one's low. Nice stop by Kiki Thole. 4-1. Wolverines. Zerkowski checks the wristband. Infield and outfield straight on. The infield just needs a force, so they're at standard depth. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Kahalen up and away. 2 0. Kiki Thole will come out to have a chat with Lauren Zerkowski. This battery has had a lot of experience in the circle and behind the dish together. It's been a go-to pairing for Bonnie Thole and company this year and last year as well. And even going back to the year before. Indurkowski's freshman season. 
mean, it's just that that veteran presence that Thole provides that just keeps Dirk in check and calms her down. We've seen that multiple times this season and in the Cardinal Classic. 2-0 count to Mary Beth Kahalen. Lauren Durkowski just needs one more out to seal a Michigan victory. Runner on first is France. That one in there for a strike inside part of the plate, two and one. Two one, rocks and delivers. Durkowski caught the inside part of the zone again. Two and two now. And she exactly what she's supposed to do. Found home on that inside, that left side part of the plate rather. And see if she does it again. Two two pitch, two outs. Here's the pitch from Durkowski. Off speed is hit high and deep to left center field. That's off the top of the wall. Conway gonna fire it into McVeigh, rounding his France. She's gonna score with no throw. An RBI double from Mary Beth Kahalen makes it four to two, Michigan. That one missed getting over the wall out there in left center by probably about three or four yeah. feet, I'd say. A well struck ball. And now the tying run is at the plate in the two hitter Aliotti. The Big Green still only have an out to play with here. Two down, runner on second is Kahalen. Odie shows bunt, she'll certainly pull it back, she does. First pitch to her, is in there for a strike for Lauren Drakowski. Dirk checks the wristband, right foot on the third base side of the rubber, left foot back, heel in the air. Rocks, here's the 0-1 pitch, fouled off toward the Michigan dugout on the third base side. Odie behind 0-2. She's hitless in this one, 0 for 3. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third. 0-2 is the count, two outs. Four to two Wolverines. Top of the seventh inning. Here's the 0-2 from Durkowski. Misses up and in. One, two, here's the pitch. Popped foul out of play on the first base side. One, two, count two outs. Runner on second is Mary Beth Kahalen after she just knocked an RBI double to give Dartmouth an extra run. One, two is hit. Hi to Conway, she's under it, and she will make the catch and wrap this one up. So Kahalen's RBI double puts a little bit of a blemish toward the end of Lauren Durkowski's day, but nevertheless, a comfortable Michigan win that they played well throughout. Durkowski finishes with seven innings pitched, five hits, two runs, only one of them was earned, one walk, 10 strikeouts. A really excellent performance for the Wolverine Ace, and Michigan wins it 4-2. to two. Yeah, and they won it exactly how you're supposed to win it. You know, they got ahead early and just ran away with it and never looked back. And we and the Wolverines have not seen that too much recently. And this was a much-needed rebound after the blowout loss to Louisville last night. And, you know, you hope this continues against uh, Illinois in just half an hour. So that's right. We'll be back with you very shortly for a Big Ten preview. Michigan and the Illinois fighting Illini. For this one, Michigan 4-2 win on the back of some excellent pitching from Lauren Durkowski. Some big time swings from Conway and Hain and Erickson who went 3-3 three for three, including the solo big blast to left center. So that'll about do it. For us in this yep. one, thanks to everyone who tuned in. We'll be back with you shortly. And please join us for that one. Thanks for everyone who tuned into this one.